All right, we should be live. And I got the sites ready. How you doing, Elvira? Thanks for coming on. Hey, thanks for inviting me. <laughs> so we had you on to talk. Let's um, let's make sure the audio is working for people in chat. If someone in chat can verify that we're good to go. Looks like there's about 10 people on YouTube. And I'm not sure on Facebook. Yeah, if someone could... Uh, Let's see, someone could confirm in chat. All right, good to go. All right, so you were working on some interesting artist proofs recently, and I thought it'd be a good idea because we were talking about it in Discord, and some of the guys, um, some of the fans knew like what this style of art was, but like it seemed like a lot did not. And as I, I, I had never heard of it personally, so I started researching and thought it was pretty interesting. And then people also were interested in it and they were saying that understanding like the background of the art history kind of makes the artist proof and the artwork that you do more fun. So that'd be a good idea to have you come on and talk a little bit about that and why you decided to, to choose that path for your latest artist proof. And if you could educate us a little bit on, I, I won't say what it's called. You tell me what it's called because I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it. <laughs> so okay. over to you. Uh, just just to note here that uh, Mike's idea of fun on Sunday <laughs> is to bring me in to bore you all with the art history lectures. Yeah, great, great job, Mike. <laughs> okay, uh, so uh, they're called the Fayum portraits. Uh, Fayum yeah. is, uh, is their name that the place they found. Uh, it's the oasis, like 80 kilometers southwest of Cairo in Egypt. Um, and they are probably one of my most favorite, like, phenomena in art history and not just from the artistic point of view but also from the cultural um, mm -hmm. they were the part of the uh, burial ritual in uh, roman egypt from around first to third century ad um, they were painted they were commissioned uh it's discussed uh, when they were painted during the person's lifetime or shortly after they died but I think they were painted during his lifetime. They were commissioned and they were like displayed at the house. And when the person died, uh, it, uh, they were embedded in, in their mummies. Um, hmm. Yeah, and uh, I think unlike like stylized Egyptian or more idealized Roman portraits, uh, those are very individualistic, very personalized. You can see all, clearly all the features of these portraits. You can pull up the first link. Actually, by okay. the way, so everyone can see those. Um, and right. uh, the thing, uh, the thing I love most about those portraits is how, like, their you can see like their shoulders and heads they are uh, turned turned away ever so slightly, and it looks for me it looks like they were like walking away, and I called out to them, and they turned for just like one second to give me that last look before disappearing forever, and that makes them un that makes them so enchanting and haunting. And uh, that's just like my uh, impression of those. And uh, mm -hmm. from the uh, historical point of view, there's there is also a lot of a lot of coolness about them. Uh, as I said, Fayum is an oasis, like um, not far from Cairo. And uh, after Alexander the Great's conquests around third, third century BC, a lot of Greeks settled, settled there and uh, over time, over those like three centuries, they uh, mixed with the local Egyptians, and by year 30 BC, uh, Egypt became a Roman Empire province. So, and the amazing thing about this, how all these three cultures became like intertwined uh, there in this region, and it can be seen beautifully in this portrait. Um, the thing is, like, it's been like 300 years after the Alexander the Great. And uh, the Greeks there still kept their heritage. Uh, they had Greek names. So most of their written documents, like apart from military ones, which were in Roman, all the other written documents were in Greek. And uh, being the Roman province, uh, they followed Roman fashions and cultures, like uh, in clothes, in hairstyles. Uh, but like apart from that, the most important thing in like person's life, the care of the soul and the afterlife, they entrusted to Egyptian tradition. So it's like a mixture of those three uh, civilizations, which mm -hmm. is really cool. And um, 
Unfortunately, very few portraits uh, remain the way they were supposed to be, like embedded in the uh, cartonage of the mummy. Cartonage is like a light version of the sarcophagus. Um, mm -hmm. They were made from linen or papyrus with some plaster. It's like basically paper mache, ancient mm. paper mache. And yeah. uh, a lot of these portraits were ripped out of the mummies by like 19th and early 20th century grave looters, and the mummies were destroyed. And uh, if you switch to the second link, you can see um, one of the preserved mummies with the portrait. Uh, this is the mummy of the man called Heraclides, and it's um, around mid second century AD. And you can see like this cartonage, the sarcophagus, it's painted with all the proper Egyptian symbols uh, proper for the burial rites. And uh, you can see like this. Uh, on his shoulders, there's uh, the, ho the Horus eyes, uh, the god Horus. Uh, I think they like symbolize protection. And uh, beneath uh, them, there's like two falcons, uh, also a chorus motif. And uh, between them, there's the crown, like elaborate crown. Oh, yeah, you can see there. And it's, um, I think it's a symbol of, it's the crown of uh, either Isis or Hathor, uh, the female goddesses, of, main, main goddesses of the ancient Egypt. And the woman with the wing got stretched. Um, this is, uh, I think this is Maat, uh, the goddess of uh, justice, truth, and uh, balance. And uh, okay. if you go lower, there is uh, also Osiris, uh, the main god of the dead. And uh, there's another falcon, uh, it's another deity. And the fun thing, um, like fun, okay. I uh, think like if you go like all the way down, down this culture nation, you're like immersed into the this whole ancient Egypt, Egyptian vibe. And if you switch to the third, uh, third image, like okay. right beneath the feet of this, uh, of all these pictures, there's a writing uh, that's uh, written in Greek of a very Greek name of Heraclides, so the Thermos. And mm. uh, yeah, so it's amazing. And uh, exactly this mixture, mixture of those ancient cultures is uh, like all combined together in the face of basically of uh, in the face of their imminent end is incredibly fascinating because like this Egypt, ancient Egypt, uh, this absolute mammoth of the ancient worlds that with traditions that went like so thousands of years almost unchanged is living out its last centuries. Uh, then this uh, mythical ancient Greece, uh, which was conquered by Ro the Romans and the Romans themselves, they, um, their empire period is their, basically their last peak before the fall. And I think um, those people in the third century, they, I think they felt that like terrifying end of their civilizations. Um, and you can like right. you can see in those portraits, and also also mm -hmm. um, in the Egyptian traditions, um, the soul is divided into several parts, um, and two of those uh, were named Ba and Ka. Ka was like a personality, uh, the essence of the person themselves, and Ba was like a vital essence and. Um, which distinguished the difference between living and the dead person. And both mm. parts were um, believed to be united again in the afterlife. And it was very important to preserve the body and make it very personalized and recognizable. So uh, the car, the part that like uh, went, went away, uh, could always find its way back to it. And uh, it was like this unwavering belief of thousands of years. And uh, it was basically the fact of the lives. And uh, okay. probably that's why by the third century, all those people in the portraits look so, I don't know, hauntingly back at you because like, mm -hmm. it's as if they know that uh, this, that one day very soon their cow would never return. Okay. So yeah, that's brief history of the Italian portraits. Yeah, no, that's really cool. Did you study that in art history or did you just um, discover it and just do some research on it? Uh, no, I did study. I did study it in art history class. Okay, yeah, I wasn't. I hadn't heard of it before, so I didn't know if that was like a standard, like a big thing that they teach in in art school uh, typically. 
Um, oh no, I know people saying my photo is broken. I'm so sorry, it, guys. It's a little choppy, but I could I could understand what you're saying. It's just not oh, okay. perfectly clean. Um, but yeah, so I was uh, like, I saw your post about it and, and the artwork that you did and started doing some research, mostly on YouTube, you know, because I don't like to read things too much. <laughs> but I watched a few YouTube videos and I found this like really cool one where the, this this lady was talking about, she was actually like recreating one and she was talking about the history of it and how they did it on this like, these wooden boards, as you could see, like in this one, it comes across pretty clearly, right? This is, um, I forget what the era was, but. I don't know, thousands of years ago, presumably. Um, so they didn't have like modern uh, paints. Um, what's the term? They couldn't. They don't mix paints like they do today, right? So they they use this hot beeswax um, type uh, substance. Yes. It, that, it's called. Yeah, it's called mm -hmm. encaustic. Encaustic. Uh, the method it's called encaustic uh, painting. It's basically beeswax means it uh, mixed with uh, pigments. So, okay. Yeah, it's, it's a very difficult method of painting. Yeah. Yeah, they they were talking about how it's like a very hot um, temperature to melt the beeswax, and then it and then you gotta you gotta basically paint quickly before it dries. Um, yeah, so, so quickly. Yeah, so it's pretty impressive. And then they all had these kind of like large, uh, blank black eyes. Um, I guess was part of the motif of it or whatever um, the term is. So, yeah, and as you said, I think a lot of them were lost, and only a few hundred or maybe like a few thousand survived. Something like that. I thought I read. Um, there are uh, like 1,300 okay. uh, known portraits. And the thing that kind of pisses me off a bit uh, mm -hmm. is uh, that in the museum in Fayum itself, like the birthplace of all this, um, all these portraits, do you know how many portraits are there, the originals? Just one, hmm. one oh, wow. single portrait in the original place. Oh, so, really? Yeah. Interesting. Cool. Well, that's, yeah, that's really interesting. And I wanted to show, I don't know. I thought I had like a good picture of your artist proof. I use it on the thumbnail of this. So I'm going to pull up your Patreon page and you showed this picture. Um, it's not the, the Amazon warriors. Did you do did you use Amazon warriors intentionally? Is that symbolic or <laughs> you just kind of picked one? Well, yeah, because, uh, yeah. Um, because it's like Amazon borders, like Greek and uh, like a bit of Roman and mm -hmm. yeah, it's kind of. Yeah. Yeah. I figured it's, it's really cool too, the way you like recreated it. It, it has that, um, it's got like a textured type look to it, like that wooden board that they used to paint it on. So yeah, very, mm -hmm. very beautifully done. And this is, um, so this is the one was this, so you, you, you painted this live or at least part of it on your Patreon, right? So you started your Patreon like a month ago and you did like a live and um, people were able to watch you paint this. So it's pretty cool. I caught part of it. It was, it was fun. Yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> uh, basically, if, you, if you're on my Patreon you, and if you watch this, you could just uh, blank out for the last 15 minutes or so. <laughs> <laughs> basically the thing. But it was so difficult to talk and paint at the same time. It's yeah, it takes so a little practice, I'm know, sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's distracting. Yep. But uh, yeah, it's really cool. I, it looks great, and uh, you captured like the that facial expression perfectly. They have kind of like a blank, you know, um, expression with the large with the large black eyes. So it looks I wouldn't really call beautiful. it blank. Blank is kind of a bit of a negative word, isn't it? Oh, uh, I don't know. I didn't mean it that way. Kind of like a <laughs> expressionless, or I don't know what. How would you describe it? I don't They're, know. Haunting, yeah. longing. Okay. Yeah. It's something like that. Yep. But this one you did like has kind of a beauty to it. Some of the other ones look a little darker um, on the on the page, so it's a nice yeah. Some of the you know like some of these look a little, a little more grim, uh, so to speak. But yeah, very nicely done. Really cool. Um, Thank you. Yeah. So if you if you want to join um, Elvira's Patreon, just patreoncom slash Um So you planning on doing more live painting sessions and and things like that in the future? Yes, I really need to get used to it, and uh, yeah. it's a uh, it's a great uh, way to communicate with people and talk. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna buy that like camera that you said and really get mm -hmm. into it. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I think there was like five to ten people in the chat that are the regulars we see in the Discord all the time. They were really into it mm -hmm. and having fun. 
the, the nice thing is you don't you don't have to feel the pressure to like lead the conversation people will co will talk to each other in a chat but yeah as the artist doing the work you're tempted to kind of look over and address questions and stuff it's hard to multitask <laughs> but, <It is. laughs> yeah was there um i thought there was like another image let me just check i don't want to yeah, I don't want to scroll through and reveal all your hidden <laughs> content. So I'll, I'll actually, I let me go on. It's, let me... on my, it's uh, on my Instagram, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. Let me see if I can find that really quick. Um, What else is going on? Oh, hang on. Let me put this over here. People can look at the images. I'll pull up your Instagram, see if I could find it really quick. I should have been more prepared. Yeah, I thought you sent it to me on Facebook Messenger, but I was looking in there and I couldn't, I couldn't find it. So I was like, oh, <laughs> all right. Here we go. Oh, you had this. Here we go. This is a good one because you had this nice little video. The only problem is, can you? Yeah, you can pause it. So there you go. Is it is it up on the screen? Yeah, it is. Okay. Yep. yep. Yeah, it looks great. And I think it's so it's coming. Um, you shipped it out a few days ago. I think it's going to come tomorrow night and it'll probably yeah, hopefully we'll yeah, auction it. Tomorrow. Yeah, we'll auction it Monday night or Tuesday night, depending on on when it arrives but yep that'll be available um for people if you're interested monday or tuesday night so keep an eye out on the um collector art house discord and the uh sorcery community facebook group a lot of positive comments here people love it <laughs> all right i think any out. any last words you want to say before i release you to have a, a uh, more fun sunday than this <laughs> yeah uh yeah uh good luck to the the rest of the stream and thank you for listening and uh bearing with uh that audio so yeah i'll check it out and uh fix, try to fix it for the next time so yeah thank cool. you so much yeah thanks and, for coming uh, on always yeah, great to bye. talk to you take care bye. see ya all right guys so what we're gonna do next is actually you know what take a look at that one there i did not set up my overhead cam so i need to do that we're going to go to the overhead cam and then I'm going to show a few things and then we're going to do a sample pack break. It's been uh, it's been a bit of time since we did a sample pack break. So this will be a lot of fun. Did I see Dan? What's, what are you doing, Dan? Dan's up in the chat. I thought you had a soccer game to go to. Blowing off the kid today. Come on, man. <laughs> He's probably on the sideline. Yell, yelling at some uh, little girls playing soccer while he's listening to the Fayum Portraits art history lesson. All right. So who do we got up in here today? Anger Worm? Nice. Jeff Rosado? What's up, man? Pewter? So, yeah, I like to do it uh, 11 or 12 o'clock on a weekend. That usually gets gets a nice balance of uh, Europeans. And then the West Coasters, I mean, if you're not up by 9 a.m., what are you doing? You, you got to get up early and enjoy the sun and, and go surfing or whatever it is you guys do out there. Living the dream on the West Coast. Oh, look at this. Hang on a second here. I just got some uh, pictures from Tony Sublow. He's at GaryCon. Oh, man. I'm going to post these in the... Uh... Oh, that's nice. He's got some sick prints with them at GaryCon. I'm going to post those in the Facebook group later. And the Collector Art House Discord. All right, so we should have the overhead cam. Let me, uh, let's do a few things here. So we're going to stop sharing that one. Hey, -o. <laughs> all right. So we're going to present the extra camera and let's see ZV one. Boom, boom. There we go. All right. So let's do one of these. All right, guys. Let's straighten this bad boy out. So we got we haven't used the Mikael, Nagy Paul, Plague of Frogs playmat yet. So we're dabbling in that one. We got our tools here. We got a sample pack. And we're gonna have a giveaway of the beta philosopher's stone. So let me see here. So let me let me um let me tell you guys a little something about what's going on with that beta stone. All right, so we had is it called the Chase Collectibles? I wish I could remember things, guys. It's tough. Memory? I'm losing it. The Chase Collectibles. Kyle Wilson. So what happened was he said that if he reaches 50 YouTube subscribers, he would give away. And if you pulled a, yeah, the Chase, <laughs> the Chase Collectibles. What's up, man? 
Oh, wait, what, what happened there? <laughs> you guys are commenting too fast on the frogs. All right, the Chase Collectibles. So you go to Chase Collectibles YouTube. He pulled a beta non-foil Philosopher's Stone, and he said if he hits 50 subscribers, which he did, he would give that away uh, graciously on one of my next lives. I got to be careful here, guys. I got people blowing me up on Facebook, and uh, yeah, I don't, I can't be sharing what they're saying. <laughs> so we're going to give away. I got the Wheel of Names all all greased up, and we're going to give that away. Um, we're going to do a sample pack break. And then I think tonight, while we're waiting on Elvira's uh, artist proof to come through of the FAM concept that we just saw, the Amazon Warriors, I'm going to launch the auction of Drew Tucker's... I talked to Drew about this. He's completely sold out of his Pathfinder artist proofs. So you see square corners, right? That's, that's the first indicator that that's an artist proof from Sorcery Alpha. There have not been any artist proofs from Beta. And let me, let, me, uh, let me hide this thing so you can see the full screen. Yeah, there have not been any artist proofs from Beta yet. I don't know if they're going to do it for the new cards. It seems like what they're doing is artist proofs for first print. I could only presume because we did not see the artists get more artist proofs for their beta cards that were reprinted from Alpha. So there's only 25 artist proofs that were given to the artists, and then the four top backers of the Kickstarter each got a full set of artist proofs, just blank backs, right? So Drew Tucker has been offering his artist proofs on his website, and the Pathfinder was super popular because it's the only avatar. First of all, avatars are huge in sorcery, obviously. You could technically play with this card. It'd be legal to play. You just sleeve it up or not, you know, play raw, whatever you got to do. Or a little magnet case or get it graded, whatever you got to do, right? So it's playable. It's a great artwork by Drew. I had him on the channel last Friday. You can check on CollectorArthouse.com and see him talking about the hand embellished prints that he did. And I'm going to show those in a moment too. There's only four left of those. They were in two sizes, the 13 by 19 and the 12 by 16. I only have one left in the 13 by 19 and three left in the 12 by 16. There were nine of each made. So very limited. And uh, Drew came on, he talked about how this, what this, the symbolism here is that the Pathfinder is casting a spell, right? That's what this is. And he's got his hands up in the air, kind of like casting a spell. And what he has here is his initials, DT, DT. And it's kind of, he did this pattern where he did it like backwards in reverse direction to create this kind of spell of his initials around the Pathfinder's head. And he talked about like how he embellished um, throughout the prints that he did. So it's like all over the place. And then he did a top coating where he, that preserves the brush strokes. So when you see it, you can really see the brush strokes and the accents he did be throughout the piece. This one, let's see the back, he says. <laughs> this is an artist proof, right? So painted artist proof by Drew. What he did is he started selling these from 25 down to one. So this one was acquired pretty early on. You see this is 19 of 25. And he's completely sold out of these now. The ones with the oil painting like this, they sold directly from Drew for six hundred seventy-five dollars. Um, was the price? I think he increased pricing as they as they become as they became more and more scarce and fewer and fewer. And they sold out super quick, so they're all gone. Um, this one's from a community member that wanted to offer this up. He was fortunate enough to have two, and um, he's going to offer one up for auction. And it'll be, I'll go live with it tonight. I think I'll do a 48 hour auction. And um, if Elvira's FAM uh, artist proof comes in by a reasonable time tomorrow before 8 p.m. Eastern when I launch the auctions, we'll just launch that one Monday night as well. And maybe we'll do that for 24. I usually do 24 hour auctions, but I'll run this one for two days, Sunday to Tuesday night. And if they overlap, so be it. Um, not a big deal. Uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow, or I'll launch Elvira's on Tuesday night. But there it is. Drew Tucker, Pathfinder, little different take here. You did a more zoomed-in view, so you kind of captured the, the essence of his of his spell and the initials, uh, but he did it a little differently. And there's his initials on the lower bottom, 19 and 25. Oil painted on the back of the very rare 25 copies, 29 technically, copies. Only 25 painted of the Pathfinder. All right, guys. So that's that. Coming soon. We're going to do a sample pack break. <clears throat> we got the Alpha A9 foils. These are so sick. 
So this was just a consignment offer with someone. Unfortunately, they're not mine. I'm going to ship these off soon. Um, I was just doing a middleman uh, deal between two, two buyers for a full set of the alphas. It's a rare opportunity to kind of see all of the alpha A9 in person um, and graded, no less. BGS, pretty nice case, enc encapsulated case. The cores, and then there's the big one, the Philo Stone. Amazing card. All right? And then the mixes. We just had Elvira on. The mixes are amazing. I think we'll have some of those artist proofs coming from Elvira soon as well. The Mix Ignis, my favorite. Mix Terra, super popular one. The foil on that's nuts. It really shines. And then the Terra. No, the Aqua. Aqua. We were just looking at the Terra. <laughs> the Aqua. All right, there. All right, guys. There's the A9. What's up in chat? Gorgeous stack. So, yeah, it was a, it was a big deal. Um, a nice... Um, Offer and sale, reasonable price. I thought, you know, is it those are those are expensive purchases, but it was a good fair offer between buyer and seller. It was a full set of the Alpha A9, uh, full non foil set of Alpha, and then also full set of Alpha Beta and um, foil Beta and non foil Beta. So, pretty pretty awesome, like a full collection all in one shebang. All right, so let's see what are we doing here? Sample pack break. Let's get into the sample pack break. As I said, I got the, um, let me see. We need to go to the second screen. I need to kill Facebook before you guys see these absolute savages DMing me with all this nonsense. All right, so we had Elvira's Patreon. Let me, um, let me post that so you guys know where you can go sign up for Elvira's Patreon. I could do it as a banner. I'll just post it in chat so you guys can click the hyperlink. And then, um, yeah, it's really awesome, guys. Patreon.com, Elvira Shakarova. Um, she just sent out these prints. She got a cool, real cool, uh, nice printer. She sent out these awesome prints of Dream Quest and a lot of her other artworks and kind of like a, a postcard-sized um, print and then these larger prints of some of her works that she signed. And um, she did this beautiful... Let me, uh, let me show... This really awesome, I, like I said, I don't want to go behind the curtain because this is for paid tier supporters. Um, you can only access if you're a, a Patreon member, but I did want to show this alternate art painting that she did of the Dream Quest really quick because this is pretty, pretty freaking awesome. All right. So if you guys, re how do I make that bigger? All right. If you guys remember, we did a um, artist, Elvira did an artist, should I go to Facebook? <laughs> I'm nervous to go to Facebook because you guys are going to see my chats and who knows what I might say. All right. Hey, there's Britney Spears. How about it? All right. So let me go to, what was it? All right. So what we're going to do is, the, the beauty of the Facebook group, guys, is that it's got a, an entire archived history of every auction I've ever run. And it's very easy to discover what those were. It's, a, it's like a great database of recorded sales of high-end stuff, of artist proofs, of original paintings. All you have to do is click on this little magnifying glass, right? And what I want to find is Elvira Shakarova um, Dream Quest, right? So you do a search on that, and then you have these filters over here. And actually, there it is. Actually, there's the painting, right? So... I'm going to go to posted by me. You can select like certain people or whatever you want. So I want to go by my posts. Um, this was something that Elvira posted of this painting. But what I wanted to show was this, right? So this was one of the original ske con sketch concepts that Elvira presented to Eric Olofsson, the game creator and, you know, de facto artistic director of uh, Sorcery. And of course, he selected the other variant that we've seen on the final version of Dream Quest, where the, the, the girl's back is, is kind of the focal point, And then you have that arm creeping up um, that's kind of obscured by the text box. So it's really cool Easter egg there. So this beautiful artist proof, we auctioned this AP. And then when the winner of that auction won that, we offered him the opportunity to commission a full-size painting of, of this uh, version of that artwork. So that's how this came to be. 
And it was a great opportunity for Elvira to kind of see through one of her ideas or visions for what this card could be and do a full scale painting of this. So she did that painting. Um, I'm actually going to have that original. She shipped it to me, as I said, a few days ago. It's going to come in tomorrow. So I'll get some great pictures of that and her new artist proof, the fam proof. And um, one of these prints also that's available exclusively through her Patreon. So if you sign up for her Patreon, you could buy... Uh, this is the painting, right? And you can buy a, a special, exclusive, limited numbered print of this. Beautiful uh, rendition of that. Came out really great to see that in full painted form. Um, so there was that. And then I wanted to show you guys. Yeah, again, here's another version of the sketch concept. This, is a, this was a progress photo of the image that was used for the card, which is you know one of the most popular cards in uh, sorcery this was an early version of this very early days so i think the um, mechanic changed and whatnot but look at that full the full scale paintings is so nice a lot of detail the colors are beautiful looks great on the card uh, we actually we auctioned the painting in here ages ago i almost forgot about that sold for uh sixty eight hundred dollars that was one of the um bigger biggest um painting sales in sorcery early on uh, this was way back in january 2023 um, but what i'm looking for here you go guys so the little video of the dream quest and then there is the artist proof let me go to the card man so it was a detailed sketch version of it um but it has, that's an amazing artist proof looks really great the number two of 25 she's keeping the number ones so it was the first one that was offered and now we have the manifestation of the full scale painting and the prints you can get exclusively through her patreon here all right so there's the patreon on the screen you guys should consider going and checking it out and signing up. Uh, you got to be a paid tier supporter to be eligible for it. You know, these, the Patreon's doing these goofy things with the um, the free tiers and the non-paid tiers. So go and support Elvira. It's pretty cheap. I think her lowest tier is like five or ten bucks. I mean, that's nothing, right? Like you spend that on. You can't even get a burrito at Chipotle anymore for ten bucks. <laughs> it's freaking absurd. Even the kids meal. I went to like five guys the other day. I had to pay like eight ninety nine for like a kid's uh, burger. This is a freaking like thin ass patty burger. Ridiculous. All right. So should we do the giveaway? Where's Kyle Wilson? The Chase Collectibles. Milton Med ain't on the wheel. <laughs> no, Mill's not it, part of the sample break. I'll do the giveaway. That way I could release you guys. If you want to stick around for the sample pack break, um, the, the main the main course here was a sample pack break. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna make you guys wait some more. Because I'm I'm just a scumbag like that. So let me remove that. Cause I did want to show while we were talking about the Pathfinder, let me show really quick the Pathfinder proofs. Or prints. There's only four of these. So you gotta act quick if you want one. Alright. Two sizes. <clears throat> The 13 by 19 is big. There's only one of those left. I sold one, what, like Friday? And then one last night, technically, or this morning. So this is the last copy of the 13 by 19. You could go on the Collector Art House YouTube channel, which you're on right now, unless you're watching through Facebook. And you can see, you see what I was talking about, right? You see the brush strokes all over the place. I got to angle this... Um, <laughs> when I zoom, it creates, see, my dilemma is I got a lot of equipment like mounted up and stuff, but I need to zoom so you guys can see the brush strokes and I need to angle this. There, you see it like all over, all over the place. He kind of did, um, he did a lot of like brush strokes to make it look like a real painting. And then he also did these silver accents. He came on, he was talking about his silver paint, which is kind of like a shimmery paint. It looks really great around the spell area up top. And it really makes it look like a like a natural original painting, and it's on this really nice high quality art paper, um, and it looks great. So let me zoom back out so you could see for a relative scale the thirteen by nineteen. That is actually the very last copy of that one, and then the twelve by sixteen. There you go. You could see by reference the 12 by 16 and then for a comparison if i put a card next to it you kind of see how how large these are pretty huge actually the 12 by 16 is really nice the 13 by 
excuse me, the 13 by 19 is really big, very tall, right? But the 12 by 16 is very nice and proportional too. So there's three of those left of this size, only one left of this one. First come, first serve, go to Collector Art House Discord or send me a DM either on Facebook, Mike Servati, or on Collector Art House Discord. All right. Yeah, I bought so I bought some NO Explode, and I uh, got all I got all jazzed up yesterday and wrecked my back. Although I'm I'm recovering quickly. I'm not that old, I guess. I still got it, baby. Still got it. You know, I think another day or two, good to go. Back at it. Back in business, no problem. All right, so we got that. Oh, one more thing. Hang on. How about that one, guys? So the original painting for Delcian Phalanx. Really rare opportunity. All of, um, so Vincent Pompetti did 25 paintings that made it into Alpha. This one is currently live for auction and it's ending tonight. It was a long auction. I usually do, as I said before, 24 to 48 hours tops. But for a painting, I think I'm going to start offering those for at least like five days. And I think I'm going to have another painting coming up. I got to check in with my guy there to see if he uh, had shipped that out. He wanted to remove the frame because it's, it's being shipped internationally to me. And um, he was a little concerned about shipping it framed. With the, you know, the glass could shatter and damage the painting. So he took that to his frame shop and he's getting the frame removed. And there'll be another painting coming. But this one is from Vincent Pompetti. The Delcian Phalanx. The Macedonian Soldiers Marching in the Battle. It's a popular card used in aggro decks. Our, our guy, our guys, Anger Worm and Mike Pelly told us on the last live. Um, so it's a it's a well used card, beautiful watercolor. I did straighten it out. You see, it's kind of he, he sent it rolled. You know, and shipping rolled is um, pretty effective uh, to protect it because those those tubes are very durable. But this one ends tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern. Again, the Sorcery Contested Realm Community Group and Collector Art House Discord. 8 p.m. Eastern. It's currently at $4,500. It met the reserve. The reserve triggered at $4,000. And um, yeah, it's a good sale, but so far it's a good price as well. A lot of paintings recently have been selling for anywhere from four to 8,000 on average in that range, depending on the piece. You know, the meta relevant ones are getting a premium, certain artists uh, popularity, like paintings like that that have many characters featured in it it's a lot of detail um those tend to have higher value um just in you know traditional valuation of art sense so it's a great offer and a great opportunity very rare to see alpha paintings come to market at this point they've kind of all been sold most have been sold um some of the artists have some but for the most part, a lot have been sold and they, they, once they're sold, you know, it's very hit or miss when they're offered for resale people, things come up. Sometimes people need cash around tax season or whatever. This might be a good time of year when we, when we see some come in the market. Um, but things happen in life, you know, like people got bills and things and sometimes they need to let one go. Um, but it's hit, we're very hit or miss far and few between. And if there's a certain piece that speaks to you, you got to pull the trigger. All right, guys. Yeah. Brian, NO explode, man. I, uh, you, you got to double scoop that you double scoop it. You get stemmed out of your mind and then you, you think you're like a superhero and then you start slinging around barbells. Next thing you know, you're a broken old man limping around the house. That's basically what happened. You know, <laughs> only 38 minutes. We haven't done a damn thing. All right. We had a great interview with Elvira and then I, then I acted like a goofball showing a bunch of art. Let me see. So I showed the Pathfinder AP. The Vincent painting, the Pathfinder embellished prints, the A9, the sample pack. Now we got to go to the wheel. All right. So again, the Chase Collectibles YouTube channel. Go support the guy. All right. That's the name of the YouTube channel, the, the Chase Collectibles. And uh, I think he plans to do breaks and openings and, and things like that. And he said when he hits 50 subs, he's going to give away a non-foil beta Philosopher's Stone. We'll spin the wheel. Um, what I want to show you guys, again, I'm going to risk it all by going to the Facebook Sorcery Community Group. And uh, maybe someone, okay, no DMs. <laughs> this is a guy having fun on the slide. No big deal. 
So you go to the sorcery group, and what we have is a perpetual, I keep putting my face like right on the camera or the microphone. Up here, people are like, what is a featured banner? No one can comprehend the featured banner. When you go to this page, right, you got this featured banner. And I think like on mobile, maybe it defaults to open. I'm not sure. Let me go to, um, let me go to uh, groups, groups you manage. So these are all my groups, guys. I got the SCR, Contested, Sorcery Contested Realm Proofs and Altars, Collector Art House, Sorcery Contested Realm Marketplace References. I created all these groups. Sorcery Contested Realm SCR Art Market. Of course, the community group is the largest. And then second largest is this Sorcery Contested Realm Marketplace Buy, Sell, Trade Group. So if I go there, yeah. All right, so the featured banner comes right up. Sometimes the featured banner does not come up. And you got to click a little carrot thing here, you know, the little, uh, the little carrot thing, you know, and it expands this featured banner. So here I was showing, this is happening now, right? The live event. Here's the painting auction. If you want to go there, you can bid here or in the collector art house discord. But what I wanted to show you guys is the giveaway post. So again, in the featured banner, you click the giveaway and then it's, there's a a lot of words here, too much to read, right? Just look at the pretty picture, you know? and try to get the gist. All right, giveaway, hello, doing things, do some stuff. So what you gotta do is you post anything you want that, that you love about sorcery. It has to be art or card related, something sorcery related, it has to be an image, right? Cause we don't wanna read a lot of stuff. We'll read the rules one time. We'll remember, never have to read it again, no big deal. And then you post something related to sorcery. It could be your own collection. It could be a painting you saw that you love. It could be someone else's collection. It could be anything you want, right? And you just post it in there and then I grab your name, your name lands on a wheel of names and you win things from time to time. So this is an evolving thing. I started it in uh, January 11th, 2024. And I said to kick off 2024, it's the year of Arthurian legends. So we're gonna feature Lady of the Lake by Severin Pinu. And we're just gonna keep this post running. You see it's gotten uh, 108, 110 people commented on it reached almost 2000 people, 363 comments. So it's a pretty active post. I'm just gonna let it run indefinitely and you guys can keep participating over the course of the year, not more than once. Your, name, your, your name's gonna be on the wheel only once unless I offer some kind of special twist on it. But if you post an image there, that's how you land your name on the wheel of names for this giveaway and potentially for future giveaways throughout the year. Cause we do them from time to time, you know? All right, so let's get rid of that before someone blows us up. This is the sample pack wheel of names. This is the giveaway wheel of names. We have 162 people. So we're going to shuffle it up real good. And then Kyle is going to get, I'll, I'll get your shipping info and Kyle's going to send you the card, the chase collectibles. Here we go with the spin. It's going to be Rothrock. No, Shannon. Shannon Elkins, Shannon Elkins, ambiguous name. Is it a boy? Is it a girl? It's definitely an Elkins. It's someone from the Elkins family. <clears throat> Elkins confirmed. Congratulations to Shannon Elkins. I will message him or her and get, or you can message me, DM me or Kyle Wilson, K-I-E-L, Kyle. <laughs> and let us know your shipping address and he will get that out to you. So congratulations. I'm gonna kill that wheel before I confuse myself. And now we're gonna to get to a sample pack break. So we have 15 slots. This is the first sample pack break we have done in probably like a month, right? Like four to six weeks, guys, something like that. I think it's the 19th break we've done. I have also opened a few other packs on the channel. I sold um, a sealed pack a couple times. And uh, the guys graciously allowed me to open it for content on the channel. And um, I sent them the, the pack wrapper <laughs> and the cards within, of course. So we're going to get to the pack. So what I need to do, we got the wheel all ready to go. We're going to give it a good shuffle. And then we're going to go back to the overhead cam. Just like that. Just like that, baby. All right. So here are the pre-labeled top loaders. Here is the pack. The struggle is always real when we're opening the pack. So I'm going to zoom out so you guys don't judge me too hard. I can't have that judgment on me. 
I got to be clear-minded going into a... Oh, here you go. All right, so story time. This is a U.S. pack, right? This one is from the heart of Texas. All right? It's a pack from Texas from the Kickstarter. You know it's a U.S. pack because it has the void sticker on front and the barcode on the back, right? Upside down. SCR04 Sorcery Contested Realm Sample Booster Pack New. Not used, but new. All right? And there's a guy recently that posted a frame with a bunch of frame packs. So I got my mind running a mile a minute on what I could do with these packs. I keep all the wrappers for just such an occasion. All right, so we're going to need a cutting tool. Should we go butterfly knife or axe tool? What do you guys think in the chat? Butterfly knife or axe tool? I'm thinking, I'm feeling butterfly today. It's kind of a dull blade though. I feel like I'm going to gash my hand open and create a mess. I don't know. Sometimes you got to YOLO. <laughs> Look at that butterfly knife. It's so epic. A knife is more elegant. Yeah, I don't know though. My back's wrecked. Let me see. So tuck, slide the cards down. Yeah, I don't know. Technique is a risk here. So the cards are slidden down. You create the incision. Then you see if it wants to cooperate. And it usually does not. Because the Chinese super glue is out of this world. And now that we've seen a cool frameable option. Oh, look at that. A little slice. Ooh, maybe that's the way, guys. I want to preserve the face of it because I have an idea of how I could frame these packs along with the alpha packs and create a cool little pattern or something. Maybe put the Collector Art House logo in the middle. The beauty is there's a lot of extra give. <laughs> this technique is so insane. Uh, there's a lot of room in the top here, thank God. There's like a freaking like almost like half an inch uh, before the card. So there's a lot, of, a lot of room to give it a little slit and try to slice open the back without getting anywhere remotely close to the cards. All right, guys. The problem is I bought this butterfly knife in Chinatown in like 1993, uh, 1993, no, no, this is after my move to Philly area. So it would have been like 1996 probably. Maybe 1997 or eight, which is pretty old for a knife that's never been sharpened. Come on now. I really want it to be clean on the face so it's frameable. There we go. All right, that'll do. Look at that, guys. Look at that. That'll display nice, right? Can't even tell it was open. A little crimpage, no big deal. All right. So we save that for the next prison yard brawl we get into. Good to go with that one. All right. I got to go right to the edge on this side, right to the edge on the other side. Oh. Almost showed a card. All right, upside down. Got to make sure we got 15 of these bad boys in here. Oh, we got an Alice card. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We have three Atlas cards in this bad boy. So this is going to be a spicy pack, guys. And let me see here. 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, so I think the Elite Unique slot. Sometimes you don't find an Elite or Unique. But that slot appears to be a spell card, which is okay. It's actually probably pretty good because we have massive potential in that spot to hit the mixed cards, which, which are uniques in sample packs. Um, we could hit the cores are exceptionals, I believe. Uh, they're called gems, you know, before they change the name the cores. Of course, the Philo Stone, Predestination. Man, you, the, the, the spell banger slot cards are epic. In the lower rarity cards, you can hit the ordinary counter spell. There's a counter spell at every rarity level that was not used in the alpha set. So those are all really big time hits. You can have the Trill Wolpertinger, which I think is an exceptional off of memory. Beautiful, beautiful artwork by Severin Pinu. And... What else? Time stop. We pulled the time stop in the elite slot. That is like one of the greatest sample cards of all time. I mean, we've been so fortunate that we've hit absolute 
unbelievable monster hits on this channel that have, have only happened here, right? No one has ever pulled a time stop. That card is absolutely godly. And I had to ship it off to a guy. He didn't want to sell it. He's like, nah. What What's money? His money is just a, a symbol of nothing that matters. But the time stop, that could take you places. I don't blame him. I wouldn't have been able to sell it. Who cares? It's priceless. It's like a museum piece. Absolutely priceless. So we hit that on the channel. We hit uh, the Mix Ignis, I think, was it, guys? Or was it the Mix Terra? I hit one of the mixes. Um, might have been the Ignis, you know, because that was my favorite mix. And, of course, I, I pull all my favorite stuff. I didn't pull a Predestination on the channel. I've sold. There's only two that exist. I sold both of them. And then I actually resold one. I brokered a deal. Uh, middleman deal on uh, resale of one of those. So that's sold three times. But there's only two that we know to exist. Actually, there's... Yeah, only two, I think. Um, two or three, I forget. The Philo Stone, we only know of one. That is the highest selling sample card ever. $16,500 at auction last year. I think it was last year, right? Or did I auction that in 2022? That was an absolute monster. All right, guys. What are we talking about up in chat? Eric is too busy admiring all the original artwork we can't get. <laughs> also, he's being slobbered on by Daryl. Daryl is a drome dairy. That's what we mean by Daryl, guys. He is a real drome dairy. And Eric is admiring his grail artwork like Lady of the Lake. He claimed that one. He has the Philosopher's Stone. And he has like a ton of other god tier pieces. Henry Cho, what's up, my man? Kyle, I hope I get your pea stone so I can sacrifice it out of deep resentment. Oh, man, it's deep. This guy hates Kyle. <laughs> He's got some bad blood with Kyle. Are you in on this, Henry? Henry is on this. Henry's got two slots in this bad boy. Um, Oh, we got a fight breaking out between Dan and Cloud? I must have missed something. There could only be one. That time stop was insane. That is a fact. Sorcery Gamblers Club. What's up, man? All right. We got all the boys here today. We got all the boys and girls or whatever Shannon is. Someone confirm. Who is Shannon? Does anybody know Shannon? Shannon Elkins? We got a Shannon Elkins out there. We do have a few ladies in the, in the community group. Of course, there's several great female artists in the Sorcery community group. Uh, there's Claire's in there. Rosie, great, very nice lady, very supportive. The ladies love sorcery. Everybody loves art. We got Bored Caden. Caden is a female sorcery fan, if I'm not mistaken. She was on the wheel. I think she was the first name on the wheel. We got the Chase Collectibles rocking the camels of every color, or at least orange and yellow. All right, did we mix these enough? Let me see. We got, look, I clumped all three Atlas cards. Should we mix those up a little bit? Let's let's insert those. Let's space them out a little bit. I think that'll be more fun. All right, so I'll space those out. And then what we're going to do here, guys, we got that level of randomization, the little pre-shuffle. And then on the wheel, going back to the wheel, you saw that I shuffled the, the board here. So first sample pack break in a while. 35 people watching on YouTube. Maybe some in Facebook. Hard to tell. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Come on. Snarf. Snarf has two. All right, Snarf. All right. We got Snarf leading us off. Remove one Snarf from the wheel. And hoop, hoop, hoop. Third time's the charm, baby. Here we go, Snarf. First card in the pack. Men of Lang, Drew Tucker. You know, it's got those yellows. Kind of reminds you of Pathfinder a little bit. The Men of Lang. He loves that yellow. So the Men of Lang's really cool. I showed like in a, in a prior break how he used these maquette little clay figures. To kind of like, you know, figure out the, the weird anatomy. You know, kind of look at, look at the twisted anatomy of these men. The men of Lang. 
This one's awesome. You really got to look at the art closely, guys, to fully appreciate it. Look how this guy is just kind of perched with his skinny little legs. Always skips legs, they, this, this guy. It's good. It's probably good. Protect the lower back. These, these are not spring chicken. These are elderly men of Lang. Ordinary, ordinary mortal beasts bleeding in discord. I still don't know what bleeding means. All this time. I, I, I never learned a thing. Whenever these men deal damage directly to an avatar, that player discards a card at random. Absolute savage move. Let me check here on the interwebs on the history of this card. The wife said keep it to two hours. I said no problem. 259 on the dot. 259, you got it. All right, Drew Tucker. Two hours, he says. Want to go to the grocery store? Got things to do. You're an old cripple. Your back's wrecked. <laughs> no problem, 259. All right. We're going to take a look at the men. Ordinary Beast, Bleat, and Discord. All right. So two to cast, two power level. Whenever Men of Lang strike an avatar, that avatar discards a random card. And so we had a slight tweak to the type line text, but otherwise it's essentially, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, damage to an avatar. All right, so some change on that, but fairly minor. Drew Tucker, the legend. How can you identify sample cards? Is the symbol different at the bottom? Yes, the, sim the symbol, so look at this. Here's the alpha card. You got the alpha symbol at the bottom. I'm not sure how well that's coming across. The sample cards have the copyright symbol. So for whatever reason, they removed the copyright symbol and they went to the set symbol. All right, fine. You want to have a set symbol? You put the set symbol over here. So when they go to Arthurian Legends now, they're going back to the copyright symbol here, art, copyright, Drew Tucker, and then you're going to have this little sword thing for the Arthurian Legends set symbol. So yeah, it is distinctly different. And there's also a lot of change, you know, um, design change, title changes, type line text change, mechanic change, all kinds of things. All right, so first hit, Men of Lang. Congrats to Snarf. It's always great to have a Drew Tucker. He's super popular. You got these guys that set collect like every card, every variant of a card. Um, and Drew Tucker is a big name, you know, big time artist for decades. So a lot of people love Drew's work. Maybe there's some Men of Lang collectors out there. You kidding me? Snarf? Off the board right away? <laughs> Snarf for two, right out of the gate. What are the odds? Two of 15, he hits it right out of the gate. All right, Snarf. Easy Sunday for you. Tell the wife, 59 minutes, no problem. Did it for you. <laughs> All right. Another spell card, here we go. Grim Reaper. Oh man, he hits the unique. Wow. The Grim Reaper. What a monster. Oh my God. One of the top Vasily cards. Look at that sick artwork by Vasily Ermolayev. Oh man. Unbelievable. A unique. I've never seen this card before. This is the first time I've ever pulled it, certainly. And I didn't even know it existed as a sample card, I don't think. I don't think I've ever seen this one pulled. Has it? Grim Reaper? Vasily Ermolayev. A unique spirit. We all will meet eventually. Voidwalk Immortal. Summon this Reaper to a random location determined by rolling a d20. When it shares a location with another minion, kill that minion, then place this Reaper in your discard pile. Wow, the Grim Reaper by Vasily Ermolayev. What incredible artwork. A super powerful card that's seen a lot of change from sample card to alpha form. Let's take a look. So let's go to the screen. How do you guys like it in chat? People are pretty hyped up. Sick card, Snarf. It's getting a lot of congrats. All right, let's take a look at the amazing Grim Reaper, man. I know who owns the original painting, boys. I've seen it in person. I've seen it in person. It's a beautiful painting. Vasily. Vasily is so good. Russian artist. Great guy. I had him on my beta box break. Elviro is on translating. It was great fun. They, they actually overlapped at art school together. They didn't realize it. They met through sorcery. It was a very special moment on the channel. All right, Grim Reaper. So it used to be three and two threshold to cast. It's now two and two threshold. It was zero power level. Now it's one. 
A unique spirit awaits us all. Lethal? Whenever Grim Reaper kills a minion, banish that minion in all copies. Search its owner's cemetery hand and spellbook and banish any copies. They shuffle. So this card has seen tremendous change. Take a look, guys. The Grim Reaper. Summon this Reaper to a random location determined by rolling a d20. When it shares a location with another minion, kill that minion. Then place this Reaper in your Discord pile. Voidwalk and Immortal. Sick. So you could resummon it with the Death Speaker. Roll, boom. Minion dead. Roll, boom, dead. Roll, boom, dead. Roll, boom, dead. All day. All day, all night with the Grim Reaper. Snarf. What a monster hit, man. Absolutely incredible. That is a big time, high value card for sure. And I, I just gave it away, man. This was a cheap buy-in for the break. So you, that is an absolute home run. You crushed. Congratulations, buddy. Thanks for supporting me on Patreon. This, this pack was a special offer to Patreon supporters, Collector Art House Patreon. When I can get a good deal, I will pass that on to supporters. I try to find ways to give back as best I can. So congrats to all of you guys participating today. You're probably all pretty likely to recoup your buy-in cost. Um, so it's kind of a no-brainer, and it's a lot of fun to do it on the channel versus just being a greed monster and keeping them all. <laughs> There's pros and cons. I mean, ah, man. The Grim Reaper. I'll never see that card again. Never. After I ship it off, it's it. It'll be extinct. All right, guys. Wow. Grim Reaper right out of the gate. You got to love it. Martin. Are you, yeah, Martin. You're Snarf? I, I get the names mixed up, man. Incredible. Congrats, buddy. That is amazing. And again, thank you for supporting me on Patreon. I really appreciate that. All right. <clears throat> Random beer facts. It's morbidly dep depressed. He just missed on the Grim Reaper. But he is going to get the first Atlas card. And since we already saw the Elite Unique slot, it's probable that the Atlas cards will be basic lands. However, I think we saw some right out of the pack, potentially in the exceptional slots. So this is about to get interesting, guys. All right, the first Atlas card, will it be a basic site or will it be an exceptional Atlas land? It's the Autumn River, Matt Thames. I think this is one of the more beautiful artworks by Matt in the set, the Autumn River. Just looks great. Springtime here in the Northeast. Things are coming into bloom. And there you go, Random. You got to have... Random collects a lot of sample cards. So I don't know if you have this one or not, but you got to have all the basic lands. Those are really cool to have as samples. All right. We're going to go back to the wheel. There's not a lot to analyze on the basic lands other than the Atlas cards for sample packs are very, very rare. Um, and they're highly desirable collectible, but not a ton of change on them. My friend and I were talking about how you would know if you completed a sample set. <laughs> yeah. It's tough, man. We keep discovering new stuff on the channel. 19 packs in, and we're still discovering that we didn't know some of these cards existed. It's absolutely incredible, fun piece of history. Our guy, H. Cho. H. Cho, man. Recently joined Patreon. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate that. And here is your first of two. H. Cho. I'm always busting his chops on his personal Facebook page, making off-color jokes. His family's probably like, who is this bastard? <laughs> All right, H. Cho. Swan Maidens. Wow, this, this is a really cool... This one really stood out to me, this artwork by Asi Haikala. I think I've pulled a few of these before. It's an ordinary, you know? All sample cards are rare, even the ordinaries. Um, so getting a lot of... It's it's weird, though. Like, it seems like some pop up more than others. Like I, I seem to get the trolls like a pretty good amount. I don't recall getting a lot of the Swan Maidens. But anyway, Airborne Submerge, Ordinary Mortal Beasts of Magnificent Grace. Airborne Submerge, Upon Our Souls They Dance, A Gentle Ballad of Hopes and Dreams. Nice. Nice one. <laughs> All right, let's check out Aussie's page, see if we had any change. So I'm going to CollectorArtHouse.com, and then you can go look at the cards sorted by artist. And if we take a look at Aussie Haikala, <clears throat> and we look at Swan Maidens. It has Airborne Submerge, Ordinary Mortals of Eerie Grace. So we had a type line text adjustment. The casting cost stayed the same. Looks like the flavor text changed on this one. So now it says, Before woman was, the water awaited her. Interesting. 
He used to say, upon our souls they dance, a gentle ballad of hopes and dreams. Beautiful. I like that line. Some of the, some of the old sample card flavor text is top notch, guys. A lot of fun. Very interesting, well done artwork there by Aussie. And it's blue. You know, those blue and foils really pop off. They look great as alpha foils. All right. 11 to go. All right. We might get this done within two hours. No big deal. Random bear facts again. All right, man. This guy actually knows bear facts. Where did I see? He was like, I think it was on um, All Things Contested Realm podcast. He was interviewing the bear facts at a tournament. And his guy had like knew all these bear facts. <laughs> I thought it was just some random bullshit name. But he actually knows the facts. He knows all about the bears. What a guy. I think he was one of like, he might have been my first ever Patreon supporter. So thank you again to Random. And uh, good luck to you, my friend. Appreciate the support. Here we go. Ooh, Heat Ray. This one is sick. All right, so it is an ordinary. I'd say this is one of the high-end ordinaries. I always, I pulled this one a few times. And I always like to break it down because this is one of those great examples of the top-down design where you have the title, the card illustration, the type line text, and then the game mechanic all cohesively tell an awesome story, right? So you got a heat ray, you got the wizard slinging the heat ray in a line through these skeletons, right? Multiple skeletons. One, two, three, three, maybe four skeletons. And why is that important, right? Because it mirrors the mechanic perfectly. Ordinary magic to keep enemies in line. So you fire the ray in a line. It deals two splash damage in a line in any cardinal direction from the spellcaster. And then you have the grid illustration, which I really love that on the early sample cards. Some of the cards in alpha have that. Not a lot. I think there was a lot more in sample card version that had that. And I think that's super cool in a grid-based game like this, right? So if we go to the website... And we look at Jeff Easley's cards. And Jeff was, should I, maybe I'll show, maybe I'll go back to Facebook and show you guys the pictures that King Tony Subba just sent me. Because um, he had one with, with Jeff Easley. I said I'd post it on the Facebook page later. But I'll, I'll give you guys that are watching live a preview of that. All right, so Heat Ray went from two to cast to three to cast. Ordinary Magic of Focus Fire. Shoot a projectile. A piercing projectile. Deal two damage to one unit at each location along its path. All right. So they got rid of the grid map there, and um, that was probably one of the bigger changes for this card. And that's a really cool, awesome Jeff Easley artwork. Yeah, having damage grid. Daniel, what's up, man? This card is actually meta-relevant. <laughs> yep. Oh, Filthy Casual, what's up, dude? Filthy Cash. He said who he, he said who he was on Facebook recently. I can't remember what your real name is. You you could disclose it if you want, man. But I forget like these these made up names versus oh Fred, right? It's Fred. Yeah, I forgot, dude. It's hard to keep tr keep straight all these names across platforms. Um, but yeah, let's go check out this. Uh, let's go check out this. All right, let's let's hope I don't have a DM from anybody. All right, good. We're in the clear, guys. All right, hang on. I'm going to go off screen here for a minute. <laughs> I don't want to show you guys too much. You never know what could happen. All right, guys. Check this out. The king. He looks like a wizard, man. He's got his hat on. There is King Tony Sublo. Look at these amazing King of the Realm prints with his real cool signature here. <coughs> looks like he did a run of 50 copies. This one says 25 of 50. You got the King of the Realm. Amazing artwork. The Death Speaker, incredibly well done. He's at Gary Khan. Look how happy he is to be at Gary Khan. <laughs> Why so serious? Here he is. A sly little smirk. Perked up for this one. At the Gary Khan, major explosion. Another epic artwork. These are large prints, it looks like. So Tony, he's always got his cigar, his cigar box in the background. Cigarettes or cigars. Or uh, the Crown Royal. He always mails me stuff in a Crown Royal bag. Hilarious. So he is going to be at the Sorcery Social Club event, the Courtesan Cup tournament, the big Courtesan Cup tournament event in Baltimore. So I will see him in June. I'll see a lot of you guys there in June. And here he is with Jeff Easley. There's Jeff, right? And some of the other greats. Look at all these great artists. 
All right, so we got, um, this is the easily, oh, we got Larry Elmore's booth. There he is, chilling in his booth. Wow, he's got some awesome stuff too. Wouldn't that work nicely for Arthurian Legends? I don't know if it's coming across large enough for you guys to see. You'll see when I post it on the Facebook page later. But you got easily with his classic dragons. Oh, there we go. He's got a sorcery piece front and center. This must be some kind of print or banner he's selling. So he's got prints as well. Yeah, I don't know if Jeff's going to be at... Um, I, can't, I can't be... All right, I gotta, let me close that one out, guys. I'll post that later. Go back to the wheel. So we hit an easily. We got 10 to go. Let's give the wheel a spin. <clears throat> Man, these sample packs are a lot of fun. You never know. Greg. All right, this is Greg's first buy-in on the sample packs. Thank you, Greg. I appreciate the support to you on Patreon as well. And first of the pack for Greg. Remember, the exceptionals can be absolutely massive in sample packs. And there are huge ordinaries as well. So we still should have three exceptionals. Is it Greg G? <laughs> Greg or Greg G? I don't know. It's nebulous. I tripped you up, guys. It's just like a painting. It's up to you. It's up to the interpretation of the viewer. All right, Greg, let's go. I might have missed. I might have messed it up. To be honest, here we go. Lucky Charm, man, that is a real nice. I tried to acquire this painting recently. Look how amazing and beautiful this painting is. You gotta wonder: Is Eric going to have a lot more relics, amulets, and gems? We saw the Ring of Morrigan was an early development card and did not make it into. Alpha, which seems perfect for Arthurian Legends. Um, but I think we're going to see a lot more relics, uh, gems, necklaces, items like that. You know, they're, they're really big in Path of Exile. Eric loves that kind of stuff. It would fit very well with Arthurian Legends. Um, this is just an amazing artwork by Jesse. But yeah, I found the guy that owned the original painting, but he wouldn't let it go. <laughs> I really wanted to buy it. Someone else wanted to buy it too. I was trying to broker a deal on his behalf, but... The guy would not let it go. Unless he got an offer he couldn't refuse, maybe. An ordinary relic to keep your streak going. Whenever something is done at random, do it an extra time, and you choose one of the outcomes. Sick. Kind of like Keith Theorem Mechanism. If an avatar bearing this charm is dealt a death blow, destroy this charm and flip a coin. If you win, the avatar survives. Dude, it's so many words to process. we got to clean it up a little. That's way too much. All right. Far too many words. Jussie Pilkus. Let's see if they cleaned it up for Alpha. I actually don't know off the cuff. I don't have this one memorized. The Lucky Charm. Let's see how this bad boy plays. Oh, they cleaned it up. All right. So it's still one to cast. An exceptional. Oh, interesting. So this was an ordinary rarity as a sample card, and it becomes an exceptional for Alpha. An exceptional relic of Benison and Boone. Always the alliteration. Bearer's Controller has, in quotations, Whenever you do something at random, you may do it an extra time and choose one of the outcomes. All right, so they simplified it. They only kept that original effect. Let's go back now to the sample card, guys. So look, it's an ordinary. It became an exceptional in alpha. And it only retained this beginning paragraph. They had two paragraphs of stuff it does. Whenever something is done at random, do it an extra time and you choose one of the outcomes. Okay, so you have some control. You choose the outcome. Um, oh, okay, so that, that stayed the same. There was no difference there. However, the second piece went away. If an avatar bearing this charm is dealt a death blow, destroy this charm and flip a coin. If you win, the avatar survives. Wow. Dude, that's wild. So you could have killed it off, but then you got to flip a coin. And if you lose that toss, it doesn't die. That's wild, man. That is a real cool sample card. That is sick. I, I, th I think, do you guys think this is a high-end ordinary? I think this is a pretty desirable one, given the very significant change you see on this to both the rarity level, going ordinary to exceptional, and the second paragraph was an entirely huge twist on that card. It would play so much differently um, as a sample card compared to its new alpha variant. Look at that artwork by Jesse. What a stud. All right, nine cards. Do we have nine left? Let me count. Let me count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, I didn't blow this thing yet, guys. Yeah, it is a real cool ordinary, says JC. <clears throat> Got JC up in the chat. A 
Lewis P. Lewis only has one slot in the pack. All right, Lewis. Let's get this party started here, pal. All right, let's get him off the wheel. We got Lewis. Do I got some extra zoom going on? This wheel is big, man. No, I'm at 100%. All right. <clears throat> All right. Next card in the pack. Nine to go. Beast of Burden. Great, great artwork by Lindsay. Very underrated. I never hear anybody talking about the Beast, but it's a beautiful artwork. She did all her stuff for sorcery, oil on canvas. I was very fortunate to sell her uh, Palaberry Bats, um, a consignment deal that I did for somebody. I auctioned it and sold it through the community group and the Collector Art House Discord. You got to join those forums, guys. In the chat, in all these videos, there's a link tree for Collector Art House. And all, remember, I rattled off all those Facebook groups. Join all of those. Join the Collector Art House Discord. Don't miss any of the auctions. A lot of high end, elite, unique art pieces, original art, original paintings, all kinds of stuff. Direct from the artists. I work with a lot of the artists directly. And then also with the community for resale consignment. So it's a lot of opportunities there. Very unique opportunities that you don't see anywhere else. All right, the Beast of Burden. An ordinary beast bears the wide world. <laughs> this beast may carry an allied minion. Existence and hardship are one and the same. Nice. All right, let's see. Did they retain that? They shouldn't have messed with that flavor text. I got a feeling they did. They always, they're always mixing up the flavor text. All right, let's do one of those. All right, Lindsay. Yeah, and as I was saying, so I own the Season Cell Sword I bought from uh, Lindsay. Beautiful painting. All right, Beast of Burden. Two to cast. So it went from three to cast to two. Actually, all right, so it got... It got cheaper to cast, but also cheaper power level. Two and two. It used to have a three power level. An ordinary beast bears the wide world, so that didn't change. May carry any number of allied minions. All right. So it used to only carry... It, it, the sample card only allowed you to carry one allied minion. The alpha card allows you to carry any number of allied minions. And the flavor text did change. So it used to say existence and hardship are one and the same. Now it says louder, louder, blast your snorting drums. Life's most weary load is yet to come. Why? Come on. Come on. Let's let's uh, let's errata that for revised. What are we doing? What are we doing with this louder louder? Blast your snorting drums? When's the last time you heard a drum snort? Come on now with that. <laughs> Life's most weary load is yet to come. I don't know. It sounds odd to me. I like existence here, baby. Look at this. Let's go back to the existence. Existence and hardship. Same thing. Look at this. Existence and hardship are one and the same. Beautiful. One-liner, simple, digestible, comprehensible, deep thoughts. Makes you think a little. Beautiful. Don't overthink it. Don't overthink it too much. The Beast of Burden. Burden, hardship, fits, man. If the glove fits, you must have quit. <laughs> Or you must quit messing with the design. All right. Getting a little carried away now. Ah, stretch the old back. H. Cho. H. Cho, the most recent patron. It's already carrying enough. Now it's got to bear the burden of all that new flavor text. <laughs> yeah, exactly, man. What the hell? All that extra flavor text. You already want, you could carry one minion. Now you got to carry all the minions and all that nonsense flavor text. Come on. Come on. Keep it short and sweet. Thought provoking. H gel. Let's go. Oh, the Mage Hunter. Sick artwork, man. You remember the Cervati family reenactment of the Mage Hunter when my son Jack slit my throat right there on the kitchen table over a bowl of gabagool. It was spaghetti, technically. Spilled wine all over the place. Or pasta sauce. One or the other. You never know. The Mage Hunter. So, Tony, do, did I have a behind-the-art feature on this one? All right, let's analyze the card first. Two to cast, three power level. An ordinary murderous mortal. Spell immunity. Magic is a story spun by those who covet power. 
Spell immunity. Yeah. Does that, did that me mechanic survive alpha? Let's see. All right, let's go back to the interwebs. Tony Sudlow, man. Yeah, spell immunity. Yeah, that's pretty sick. So the mechanic, one of the mechanics that was retired. Now it's three to cast, two power level. An ordinary mortal of enduring grudge. Genesis, kill target spellcaster, minion nearby. Death is too kind for the likes of you, but I am a kind man. The Mage Slayer, guys. How about it? How about it? The artwork is BA. You trying to get me banned from YouTube? Baited me on that one. <laughs> That is a great ordinary. Yeah, that is pretty hot. Because you got the spell immunity, baby. That is sick. This is a real popular artwork, too. People love this one. H. Joe, nice hit, man. You did all right. H. Joe got both of his already. Let's see. What did you get? Did you get... uh? You got the Mage Hunter and... Oh, the, the Maidens. The Swamp Maidens. So you got two ordinaries, but you got a real nice, nice one in that Mage Hunter. Where did I... All right, guys. We're going to risk it again. Let's take a look here. Let's go to... Oh, easy, Tony. <laughs> uh, you, never, you never know what he might say. All right, let's go to the sorcery. Let's go to the sorcery Facebook group and look for Mage Hunter. And... Posted by you. Sometimes I post... Oh, it's not there? Did I post it only on Discord? Oh, man. You gonna make me go to Discord, guys? Let me see. Mage Hunter. Let's try Mage Hunter. Josh posting up in there. Where's my Mage Hunter reenactment? All right, all right. Let's go to the community group. And do a search for Mage Hunter. I thought I tried to do this live before too and failed. So posted by you, which is me, Mage Hunter. Uh, oh, dude, dude. Look at this. This sold for $1,000. Look at this incredible. Well, I'm not even showing my screen. <laughs> Why didn't someone warn me? No one says a thing. I'm over here talking to myself about things I'm looking at myself. So Tony Sudlow, we auctioned this one. Look at this gruesome, epic, artist-proof painting that Tony did. I think this is the first one I ever auctioned for Tony, the Mage Hunter. And it was really awesome because he included this print that he signed. He always signs Anthony P. Sudlow. And um, it's really awesome how he had the original sketch concept. And then he shows kind of like the, the color study or evolution that resulted in the final copy. So this guy's got this beautiful piece. He's able to frame up. Who bought this? Did Shadow Cloud buy this one? All right, I could probably look at the auction result. Who who won this one? I want this back, man. Give me this. Dude, a grand. Was it Griff? Griff and Orr? Damn it, dude. Damn it. What a steal. What an absolute steal. So for a thousand bucks, you got that. You got this massive detailed sketch. What I have uh, multiple art portfolios. So I'm not sure what size this one. This might have been my 14 by 17. But look at this sick. This was the original sketch. You got the original sketch for the original painting. Plus this sick print signed by Tony. And this incredible artist proof. This was early. This was August of 2023. So yeah. I mean art valuation has done nothing but skyrocket straight up. That was the 2 of 25. What a freaking steal that is. For that package, that's unbelievable, man. But that's not what I was looking for. I went off on a wild tangent there. What a deal. You got to follow the auctions, guys. You never know. You never know when a deal might come. There it is. I showed them all, right? You got the... Uh, I think this was probably Griff's picture. He shows the non-foil alpha, the foil full art, the AP... And then did you, yeah, he had the sample card, Spell Immunity. There it is. Damn. He's got it all, man. He is the master mage hunter. That is incredible, dude. Yeah, I don't know, guys. I did a real cool uh, reenactment. <laughs> I had my son slit my throat and I can't find it. 
I gotta look for that. Dude, that's sick, man. The Mage Hunter. That's a nice hit. That is really cool. One of my favorite things about sorcery is they allow artwork that companies wouldn't touch anymore. <laughs> yeah. They're pushing the boundaries. He doesn't have the sample card? No, he's got it. It was in that picture. I think that was Griff's picture. Or is he saying in Discord he doesn't have it? Is he talking in Discord right now? I think Griff's in my Patreon still. I haven't heard I haven't seen him all around a lot. I don't know if he's been busy doing other stuff. Oh, what's up, Jordan? Thanks for popping in, man. All right. Yeah, you missed some hot shit, man. We hit the freaking unique Grim Reaper sample card. Unbelievable. And we're getting some nice hits. Brian. Brian for two. Finally comes off the board. Oh, I have my volume on? <laughs> I heard it clap. I'm going to mute that. I heard it clapping. <coughs> All right, that Mage Hunter's hot. Spell immunity. Bone Rabble. Bone rabble for Brian. Who was it? Was that Shadow Cloud too? I swear to God, I heard Shadow Cloud saying something recently. Was it Chat? No, it was Josh. Was it Josh? Josh, were you saying you hit the bone rabble? That's one of your favorites from Jeff Menges. Jeff Menges just got his artist series playmats of the Watchtower. So I think it's a hundred copies because he showed a picture. It said slash one hundred. He numbered it one up at a hundred. What Jeff's doing is he's going to sell 50 of those. I think what he said is he's going to sell 50 of those online. And the other 50, he's going to bring to events. And he's going to limit... Excuse me. I think he said he's going to limit the number. Oh, the giveaway I already did, man. I talked about that. It's on my Sorcery Contested Realm Community Facebook group. I have a post that says giveaway. It's got the Lady of the Lake painting picture from Severin Pinu. And uh, the instructions are right there on the Sorcery Contest Realm Community Facebook group. But anyway, Jeff, has, he's going to sell 50 online of these new playmats that he got from the company. Artist Proof Series. They're going to be offered through the dust store, the regular ones. But then you have the Artist Proof Series. There's going to be 100 of those, right? And Jeff's going to offer 50 online, probably through jeffmengas.com, I assume, which is his website. And then he's going to offer 50 in person at shows he goes to. So he's going to be at Gen Con. He's going to be at um, the Sorcery Social Club event with the Courtesan Cup in uh, Baltimore in June. And in person, they're going to be $50 on his website, $60 plus shipping. You know, so that's, that's, a, that's a fair price point in my opinion. I mean, these are very limited, only 100 copies in the Artist Proof series, first ever made by the company. I think that's going to be a very desirable uh, playmat, the Watchtower is beautiful artwork, but the Bone Rabble, that was one of the first uh, foils that I pulled when I did my big Alpha Showcase event with a lot of the sorcery artists. The Bone Rabble was one I pulled, and the foil looked awesome. All right, so let's take a look at how the sample card compares to the Alpha variant. It was one to cast, one power level, ordinary undead scrabble to the surface. When this rabble dies on a non-water site, burrow it instead. They can unburrow as if they had burrowing. Oh, okay. So it gets a burrowing. Um, <clears throat> let's go to the website and go to Jeff Menges's page for the bone rabble. Oh, man, my back, my back's acting up. All right, so oh, <laughs> got nerfed pretty hard. Went from one to cast to three to cast now. Ordinary undead scrabble to the surface. Whenever you play on Earth site, you may summon Bone Rabble from your cemetery to that site. Wow. So that one that underwent a very significant design change. When this rabble dies on a non-water site, burrow it instead. They can unburrow as if they had burrowing. So it was cheap to cast and it had a very different card mechanic. Very interesting. Nice hit, Brian. So that is a card that has seen a lot of change, which tends to be the more desirable and uh, valuable cards in there. And thank you, Brian, if I didn't say it, for supporting me on Patreon as well. Again, this was a special offer for patrons. Um, significantly lower price than the typical buy-ins for these. These are extremely rare. So uh, sample cards are quite rare. And if the demand is there long-term, I think they're going to be pretty desirable and valuable as the game grows and more and more people get interested in the, the history of Sorcery, Contested Realm, and the very significant design change that we've seen from the pre-alpha era to the alpha debut. 
Alonzo? Uh, the, is it Alonzo? Oh, it's Greg. <laughs> Greg slips in there for the Atlas card on top. So second card for Greg comes off the wheel. And you are about to hit one of the elusive Atlas cards. Will it be one of the basic sites? Let's see. Oh! Gnome Hollows. Oh, my God. I thought for sure, I was fully expecting a basic site. The incredible Gnome Hollows by Matthias Frisk. This is the first Gnome Hollows I have ever pulled. It might be the only one I've seen in sample card form. So this is a monster hit in the exceptional slot. The Gnome Hollows, an exceptional site of cramped security. Minions with more than three power can't traverse these hollows. Man, one of the great artworks by the great Matthias Frisk. Incredible. Wow. An Atlas exceptional, man, is on a rarity level unlike anything else. The Atlases alone in sample, ca sample card form are extremely rare. To hit one as an exceptional is really incredible. Damn, that, that is a banger. Congrats, dude. Let's take a look at how this card evolved. That is a monster. What a freaking pack this was. Man, I, I, I just pissed away this pack. <laughs> this pack was like super cheap, man. Oh, man, what an incredible pack. Matthias Frisk. I love Matthias. Such a great guy. He's, he's so passionate about sorcery. He loves playing it. He watches all the content. He's a great supporter of everybody. Man, Gnome Hollows. So it's still an exceptional. Exceptional site of quaint construction. Units with three or more power can't enter this site. And he used to say minions with more than three power can't traverse these hollows. That is a really awesome artwork. Let's let's take a let's appreciate the artwork for a moment, guys. Can't traverse these hollows. Love that phrasing. Full of flavor. Yep. Look at that beautiful artwork by Matthias. I'll try to hold my hand steady. This is super cool, man. The underground burrowed world of the Deep Hollows. An exceptional site of cramped security. Minions with more than three power can't traverse these hollows. Dude, I hope Matthias is watching. He'll see it. He watches everything. If he's not seeing it live right now, he'll watch it back. Greg, incredible, dude. That was a great, great hit. You gotta love that. I was not expecting an Atlas card in the exceptional slot. I don't know. That might be a one of one. That might be a pop one. I can't. I really don't recall that ever being pulled. You guys, let me know if you've seen that card in sample form before. That is unbelievable. I'm kind of shocked. Wow. All right. Five. To, did we really not get any for Easy B yet? Let me see here. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, still got EZB. We got five cards here. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> wow, unbelievable. Gnome Hollows, that's hype. This sample pack has been a banger. Great for content, but Mike, you gave monster hits away. I appreciate you sacrificing for the fans, brother. That Grim Reaper is going to hurt to mal out. Dude, I just freaking, that, that Grim Reaper is definitely a four-figure card. People would pay top coin for that. I'm pretty certain. But yeah. Yeah, I pissed this pack away big time. <laughs> well, whatever. At least it's going to patrons. You know, they pay to support me all this time. A lot of these guys have been supporting me for over a year. Super loyal and uh, generous. Greatly appreciate it. So I'm happy to do it. No regrets. <laughs> no regrets, guys. All right, User17. User17 is another guy that's been around since a while, man. Six to, six to 12 months at least. The user. All right. All right, guys. <clears throat> user 17. Sea Serpent. My guy, Pompetti. This is one that I that I often pull. The Sea Serpents, I think I still got a few artist proofs of this. I've, Dude, the, the Pompetti proofs have been popping off lately. A lot of people have been scooping those up. And also the Elvira Palakowska proofs. Those are offered for direct sale. So anything that's not a unique is 300 bucks, And then the uniques are 400 And people are just scooping those up. I don't know. Maybe because art prices have gone up. 
Um, Elvira Palakowska is working on more, and I'm going to auction some of the high-end ones because we're getting a lot of inquiries about those. Um, some of her more her dual land, some of her more um, popular meta relevant cards. Um, what is the uh, infiltrate? You know, is one that gets asked about a lot. Magellan Globe is popular, um, so she's working on a, a couple more sets. I think that she said she was targeting for the end of the month. She's going to send them out. I'll probably bring some to the Courtesan Cup too. But anyway, Sea Serpent, Vincent Pompetti. Let's give it a quick look. We've seen this one before from Vincent, the most commissioned artist in Sorcery Alpha. Got his original painting up for sale right now. The original painting of the Delcian Phalanx. Where's that Phalanx at? The Delcian. Exceptional mortals who yield no ground. They only move themselves forward. <laughs> All right, but we're talking about the Sea Serpent. So calm down, guys. Calm down. Get a hold of yourselves. Silly bastards. All right, Sea Serpent, four to cast, four power, an ordinary beast that thrives in the deep. That got changed to an ordinary beast bestrides the ocean. I mean, it is bestriding the ocean, but thrives in the deep? That is that is nice. Again, you could have just kept that one. I like that. An ordinary mythic beast that thrives in the in the in the deep. Oh, so it had the mythic. Dude, this card is more banger than I thought. It had the the mythic. They got rid of that word. I don't think that shows up any. You guys, let me know. Does that show up anywhere in Alpha anymore? Mythic. I think it might have on um, Curios, but not in the core Alpha cards. That is sick. Wow. Ordinary beast bestride the ocean. All right. So back to the site. Submerge and waterbound. That's the same. All right. So the flavor tech. Text changed as follows. Here's what it says on a sample card. Young serpents have been spotted in rivers as far north as the boreal forests. Now it says the study of sea serpents advances one funeral at a time. That change I do like. That was a cool flavor text change. But, yep, mythic is not a word. Yeah, so that is, dude, that is a cool throwback. That is like a sample. Let's go to, let me show you guys something here. We're on the Collector Art House website, right? And you go to Collector's Corner and then go to, careful here when you scroll, Curio Cards, right? And I got this little write-up about Curio Cards. What are they? They were revealed as a thing or announced as a thing when it hit the $1 million mark. This is where you find them in packs. So everything you need to know about Curio Cards. Some articles. I actually speculated on some Curios um, back in like early 2022 that actually became real things in Alpha and Beta. So I called it, baby. Called a few of them. <laughs> ah, I got to pat myself on the broken back. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll be paying the price for this live later. All right. So we got the Alpha. Let's look at the Alpha Curios. I got a catalog of all the Curios. And it speak, and it shows images. And it, if you click one, you know, it tells a story and speaks to the change. Some I have a Behind the Arts article about. Um, and I'll link it there so you can find all the information you want to know. Uh, let's see. So we're looking for any that have the mythic and the type line text. I think I want to say it might have surfaced in beta, right? Legendary was a thing. We've got legendary sites. All right. So we got <laughs> freaking bridge troll. We got the boss troll and the bridge troll and the cave trolls. Can never have too many trolls. All right. Let's go to the beta gallery. Do we have any mythics? The beautiful elemental avatars. Elite Mortals, Exceptional Relic, Legendary Sight again, Exceptional Sight, Mare Folk, Undead, The Spear of Destiny, The Shifting Sands, Magic of Flickering, Elite Dragon, Elite Mortal. Ah, so we didn't have Mythic. All right, so it was unique to the sample cards. That's actually more cool that it's only on the sample card. All right, so the other, the other thing I want to show you guys, if you go to the Sorcery Behind the Art page, and did I do a Mage Hunter behind the art? No, I must have just told the story on the Sorcery Community Facebook page. Each of these are clickable, and they tell the story directly from the artist of what the art was inspired by. So you got King of the Realm, nice little write-up with insights from Tony Sudlow, what it was inspired by. All right, I thought I did one for Mage Hunter, but I guess I never wrote it up in an article. I only talked about it. 
on the community group. All right, guys, without further ado, four more to go. One, two, three, four. Four top loaders, four cards. Brian. All right, Brian. We got Brian again. Coming off the wheel. And right off the top here, from the spell book. Oh, the beautiful Autumn Unicorn. So I sold this painting a few months back. I think 4100 I think it sold for, which is too cheap for this beautiful painting. It's Severin, man. Severin Pinu. Great artist. Severin. Ah, that. <laughs> Can't move. Cripple. Yeah, I do got this painting. I, so we got the original. We got a Severin painting here, guys. This one will be offered. Way too cheap, man. Way too cheap for a Severin. I need that Ben Gay. Who's got the Ben Gay? This is an original painting by our fear, our fearless leader, Severin Pinu. This amazing dragon. Look at, the look at the detail in the dragon scales. This one's going to be auctioned. Or you know what? You know what I've been waiting? I got to talk to Severin about this. But I might bring this one to Baltimore for the event in June. And I don't know. Maybe I'll offer it there for offers in person. Or maybe I'll run an auction. I'll talk to Ron, Ron about it too. Maybe I'll run an au auction that straddles the event so people can see this in person. If you guys come to the event in Baltimore, the Courtesan Cup event, the, the Sorcery Social Club, um, maybe I'll, I'm will i going to have a booth there, right? So maybe I'll showcase and display this original painting from Severin because I'm sure people would love to see a Severin original. And I'm sure I would rather poke my eyes out then bring the key theorem mechanism and put that baby at risk <laughs> so i don't think that's gonna happen guys but this dragon by severin maybe i'll bring that and show it's so big i can't even fit it on the camera look how big this is i could, I could go sideways with it it's freaking huge and it's just stunning and i'm gonna bring the embellished prints all the embellished prints i did with severin i just bought another portfolio book because they're all like 16 by 20 they're pretty big uh, so I bought another portfolio book, and I think I'll bring that to the Courtesan Cup. And at my booth there, I'll show you guys all the embellished print projects that I've done with Severin, Vincent Pompetti, um, Elvira. Do I have any from Elvira? I don't have the, the mixes from Elvira just yet. She's still working on those um, over time as she could fit it into her schedule. Oh, I got the Melissa Benson cores. And I got the Drew Tucker. They might be sold out by then. I told you, I only got four left of the Drew Tuckers. So you got to hit me up quick for those, but I'll show you mine. I have like an artist per proof version that I'll at least show in and I'll show the whole portfolio of all the projects I've done with sorcery artists. I'll probably have artist proofs from a number of artists, card alters from new artists that I'm discovering and trying to showcase across all of the different forums that I manage. But here you go. That's the original from Severn. She's like, hey, I think I still got that painting. You think they'll be interested in that? I'm like, probably. <laughs> yeah, probably. You think they'll be interested in a Severin original? Yeah, I could probably think of a few guys. <clears throat> Incredible. Everybody loves Severin. It's a legend. Absolute legendary artist. Look at her beautiful work. The Autumn Unicorn. Probably think of one or two people. One or, one or two boys and girls might be, might be interested in a Severin original. So the Autumn Unicorn, man. Three to cast, four power level. That is good value. Did that change? Let me see. Let's go to the website. Yeah, it's an ordinary. Um, so sorcery card, Severin, Autumn Unicorn. Yeah, all right, so that's what you're talking about. Yeah, it went from ordinary to exceptional, and it's still three and four. Yeah, so I mean that would have been pretty. <coughs> ah, it'd be nice if I could talk and breathe. That would have been pretty sick, guys. Take a look. If you had an ordinary, you could run four copies in your deck, and you get great value with three to cast for four power level. So they made it an exceptional to nerf it a little bit, and you could only run three copies. Still solid though, three copies, depending on the size of your deck. Yeah, it's a strong card. Very powerful, JC says. An ordinary unicorn holds its ground. Love that type line text. An exceptional beast, renowned in legend. It's never wrong to use the word legend. Holds its ground? 
is pretty sick. But if you're going to change that and you insert the word legend, this guy's not going to be mad. You know, anytime you want to say legend, that's okay. All right. Nice, Brian. Nice hit for you, my guy. Well, let's chat. Let's take, let's go down. Let's take a walk down memory lane in the sorcery community group real quick. I got 15 minutes and I'm still done within two hours. Records being set here. All right. So we're going to look, we're going to do a little search for autumn unicorn. This is the beauty of this, of this uh, Facebook group, guys. You got to be on here, right? Cause you see all the auctions. You see all the beautiful work of Severin. You want to look at posts by this Gindaloon right here. This guy, Mike Cervati, posted by me, searched, and here you go. So here's the original. Yeah, so it had a $3,000 reserve, seven grand, buy it now. I thought someone might actually jump at that for a seven, honestly. But it, um, it was that kind of a lull in the market, I remember. December 6, 2023. Christmas season's kind of tough financially for people. 21 comments, so it got, a, it got a lot of bids. It saw a lot of action, so good breath of bidding on this one. Um, but there it is. That's the original painting, the beautiful Autumn Unicorn. 4100 That's a deal. Look at some of these beautiful artist proofs she did for these. You saw that first one, the Majestic Unicorn. And then, like, she used this gold shimmery paint, so it kind of shines under the light in different angles. It really catches the light beautifully. Same thing here. You see on the unicorn, that is a nice one. Nice display. The master set. People love collecting every variant in the master set. There you go. You got the alpha version, then you got the sample card. Then you got an artist proof, and then you got the full art from the foil, the back of the foil. Beautiful sample cards. The Trill Wolpertanger, man. We're going to see it. We got to see that in Arthurian Legends, right? How could it not? Look at that incredible. That is the, this is the greatest frame job this world has ever seen. Could there be a more perfect frame for this freaking Wolpertinger? That is unreal. And there's a sample card of that. Unbelievable. Look, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, no big deal. What, did, what an auction weekend that was. All right, guys. I'm, I'm going to probably... I forgot. I was going to launch like the next sample pack uh, offer... I gotta. I don't want to run out of packs. I think I I, I keep buying them though. <laughs> so I've been like slow rolling. Uh, I can't offer it as cheap as I just did. There's easily. There he is. There's Tony. All right. Um, yeah, I might I might open buy in for the next one. Um, but the price point's going to be higher. I can't do it this inexpensively, especially after I just got absolutely gashed with a monster pack for the patrons though keeping it real for the patrons easy b somehow gets to the bottom three and hasn't hit a single one he's on the wheel twice and he's finally getting on the board here easy b gets two of the last three all right here we go guys can we get confirmation on the exceptional sample corn what does that mean the sample corn is an ordinary the alpha card is an exceptional See? Hey, you want to, you want confirmation? Ordinary. Sample card is an ordinary. Sample corn. <laughs> All right, easy B. Apprentice Wizard. Wow. Super popular card. Great artwork by Aussie. Everybody loves the wizards. The Apprentice Wizard. You got an apprentice and a master. Apprentice Wizard. An ordinary mortal, untrained and restrained. Spellcaster draw a spell all right so let's check here on the apprentice wizard by aussie haikala man this was the aussie pack we got a few banger aussies so you got the apprentice and the grandmaster people love the grandmaster because you draw three cards the as an elite the apprentice comes into play as an ordinary he's new to power untrained and restraint both are cool new to power though power Legend or power? Those words are never wrong. Always bangers. So a great hit. The Apprentice Wizard. Three to cast. One power level. An ordinary mortal. New to power. Spellcaster. Genesis. Draw a spell. Such a beautiful... Look at look at this. Look at our work on this one. Man. You know what, guys? I sold the original painting for the Grandmaster Wizard. 
I just remembered it. I, I got to go back to the website and show you that. That was an early auction I did. In the early days, people were freaking stealing those paintings. I should have bought every painting myself because they've done nothing but go up in value and they're just so precious that once they're gone, they don't come around. They don't come around again. Very rare, especially when they change hands a second time because that usually means someone was either speculating the first time or had to let it go for whatever reason. But when a collector then buys the second time, I, I've never seen a painting resurface twice yet. Um, it's still early, but I mean, when it comes around and if it speaks to you and it's one you love, you go for it. So let's see here. <laughs> you never know on Facebook guys. So this one, this guy's ending tonight, 8 PM Eastern tonight. But I wanted to look for the apprentice, the grand because how much did the grandmaster wizard sell for? I don't think I don't think it sold very high. It was too here. It is. It was too early on. So, posted by you, the Grandmaster Wizard. Look at that. I framed it up. I had this red mat, nice lighting. Look at that amazing painting by Asi. The Grandmaster and the Apprentice. These dude. He's a good. He's a really good artist. I can't wait to see what he does. Yeah. So I told you I sold the bats also. Lindsay Crumet. She's got the cool initial thing. The L. The LC. I think she changed up how she's doing the initials. Uh, but Lindsay's really great. Oil on canvas. So this was like stretched on canvas board. Beautiful. Another shot of the Apprentice Wizard. What did it sell for? So I had many. I You know, I staged it in different ways. In like a light box type thing. <laughs> I couldn't pick which one I wanted to display. So I displayed them all. All right. So the auction is closed. Oh, so it didn't hit reserve. That's right. What did it um, top out at though? I ended up did it topped out at two grand. Can you imagine? Who wouldn't buy this for two grand, dude? The buy it now is thirty seven hundred. This was August of twenty twenty two. We didn't know back then. We didn't know it was early days of sorcery. So early, August twenty twenty two, pre alpha. It was the it was the infancy of the art market for sorcery, and the market is huge now. Every painting selling for four Gs plus. Two grand. That that's where the top bid. It didn't hit reserve. So I ended up um when it doesn't hit reserve, I usually work with the top bidders to see if they wanna uh buy it at the reserve price. Man, look at this. So we had like two are you kidding me? So there's only one bid on this auction. Wow. That must have slipped in there at a very awkward time in sources. August twenty twenty two. Unbelievable, man. If you if that were to auction now, this is like a big time card in the game. The Grandmaster Wizard. It's an elite rarity. You draw three spells and it's a spellcaster. So card draw, always huge. I cannot believe that. Someone absolutely stole that one. Because it only ended up selling, I can't remember exactly what it sold for. A few grand maybe. Um, but dude, it would be worth easily double that right now. No joke. Unbelievable. All right. Two to go, guys. Two to go. We're at one hour and 53 minutes. I'm a man of my word. 259. 259 or less every time. Easy B. All right. Two? Oh, I got an extra case in there. I was worried for a minute. Extra top water. That is bad. <laughs> Wrecked back, guys. Wrecked back. All right, we're all going to make it, boys. We're all going to make it. We're all going to make it, bro. Easy B. All right, easy B. Alonzo only had one in the pack, and he's last, and he's going to get the Atlas. This one is going to easy B again from the spell book. Did we hit? How many exceptionals did we hit? I think we still have exceptionals coming. Flash fires. Called it. Another Matthias. We had two Matthias Frisk exceptionals. Wow. Flash fires. What an artwork on this, guys. Look at the plumes of smoke coming off of the fire. Unbelievable. Vastly underrated artwork. Really nice. Against the beautiful starry night sky. You got these three people fleeing from the plume of flame. Exceptional magic of persistent destruction. Look at all the words. Let's unpack all this stuff 
that this freaking thing does. Play near your spellcaster. These flash fires deals four splash damage wherever it's summoned or moves to. At the start of your turn, it moves to an adjacent, previously unburned site. The flavor. <laughs> an unburned site. If it can't move, discard it. Wow, flash fires. So yeah, Dan's pointing out the name change. Let's take a look. We love Matthias, man. What an incredible artist. His, I did an interview with Matthias. I got to show you guys that. All right, so it changed to Wildfire, which is cool. An exceptional aura of it, itinerant, itinerant ignition. <laughs> you dug deep for the alliteration on that one. The itinerant ignition. Exceptional magic of persistent destruction is what it used to say. All right, conjure Wildfire atop a single site nearby. At the end of each turn, each unit here takes three damage, then move Wildfire to an adjacent location it hasn't visited before. If none remain, dispel Wildfire. Wow, that is a great hit. What a, what a freaking pack this was. Was this an incredible pack? Dude, the buy-in was so cheap. Thank you, EZB, for your support on Patreon, man. You've been around for a long time as well. I got to thank everybody here. Alonzo's up next. Alonzo has a beautiful art collection. Let, let me let me just thank all the patrons before I forget, because I should have been doing that all along. I did that a few times, but I was inconsistent. Snarf, thank you, my man. Random Bearfax, one of the OGs. H. Cho, the most recent guy. Random Bearfax again. Greg, thank you. He's also recent. Louis P. H. Cho, Brian. User 17's been around a long time, and Easy B. Thank you guys all for your generous support on Patreon. It helps. It helps put the lights on to beam on my forehead and recede my hairline. <clears throat> and a stream yard. I wasn't working in HD before. I upgraded. The overhead cam. Elvira Shakarova is going to get one. We're all using the ZV-1, baby. Product showcase mode. Thank you guys for your support. Appreciate it. All right. So what I wanted to show you is we go to interviews and articles. And I did a great interview. I did. I interviewed many of these sorcery artists, right? So thank, thank you all. Thank you to all the artists as well for your generous time and allowing me the opportunity to do that. It's greatly appreciated. But there was an incredible interview here with Matthias Frisk, right? Because we get to see he's done so much freaking work outside of sorcery. It's absolutely legendary. Imagine going to a Matthias exhibit. Look at all this freaking art. So great, man. Look at him. He's the man. The absolute man. <clears throat> the small village of Scanage. And you could learn about... Some of the inspiration from his work. Oh, yeah, I'm rocking out, man. <laughs> Nicest guy in the world. He does album covers. Dude, incredible work. You'd be blown away. You got to go to go here, look at his inspirations, look at all his social media, his portfolio of work, chilling with the great Dan Seagrave here. Look at Sly Dan right here. I'm winking with one eye. He's like, what, what do you want from me? Matthias, happiest guy in the world. With his hero there, Dan Seagrave. Clandestine, entombed. Considered the greatest Dan Seagrave, by many, to be the greatest Dan Seagrave album cover artwork. That is a classic. So I you know, featured some of the work of Dan. You get the progress photos of the zombies. So this is from Matthias' hometown. This is an amazing artwork. So, so beautiful. So much detail. Really incredible. But this is a building... A church, I think it was, in his hometown. There it is. Right? Unbelievable. The incredible... Why did I sell this freaking painting? I sold this one, man. The minor explosion. I sold that. I sold the exorcism for Matthias. Uh, it was a good sell for him early on. Be worth way more now, you know? There's there's, there's something to be said about patience. Um, but, you know, who knew, right? The art market just keeps going up and up. The demand's higher. The, the work is appreciated. These are on huge panel boards. It was so great to see this in person. I'm so uh, thankful and privileged to have seen that. It's just a great piece of art. Look at this. So great, man. Dave Sheedy owns that, man. Crazy Dave Sheedy up in Albany, New York. Fights two games. One, we're going to see Dave at the Courtesan Cup. He says he's coming in June. Can't wait, man. I don't know if he's going to bring the painting, but good for him for owning that one. And I sold Exorcism, but... Yeah, check it out, man. Check out that. Check out those interviews. Let's give Alonzo a spin. Who's blowing me up on Discord? Hey, guys. Like and subscribe to the video, too. I forget that every single time. Nobody comments on it. 20 people like it. Nobody subscribes. 
<laughs> Help me out a little bit. Throw me a bone. All right. Turns out it is Alonzo after all. All right, Alonzo. Last, last slot magic from the first sample pack we've done in like a month or two, and it was an absolute monster banger. Incredible pack. I'm going to open up a new channel and list. Buy, well, let me think about pricing for the next one because uh, these packs are expensive as shit, man. I got a special deal on this one, and I was able to give a good deal to patrons, but I got to go back to normal pricing. If you guys want to comment in the Discord or something, and give me some feedback on what you think is fair pricing. But uh, they're getting more and more rare and harder and harder to acquire. So, Alonzo, with the last Atlas. Oh, my God. Watchtower. Another, dude, the exceptional Atlases. Is this the first Watchtower ever pulled? An exceptional Atlas is massive. And this is going to be the new exclusive playmat, the Artist Series playmat from Jeff Menges. Out of 100, I was just talking about it, right? He's going to be on his website. It's going to be at his shows. He's going to number it and sign it. Dude, this is one of his greatest artworks. This is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful artwork. Watchtower. It's definitely one of my favorites from Jeff. I was just telling him he's got to do prints of these. The playmats are going to be huge. He's going to sell out so fast. I have no doubt. 50 or 60 bucks? No problem. No problem. That's a steal. This is great. This is great art, man. I wish I could have bought this painting right here. That is so nice. Alonzo. Dude, that is lucky as hell. Watchtower. An exceptional sight with vigilant watchmen. Nearby enemy stealth is negated. Jeff Menges. What a painting. Wow. That card just looks so good. I don't want to stop looking at it. I'm actually looking at the screen like a moron. I could be looking at the card right in my hand. <laughs> I got to hold it up to the camera, though. Wow. The beautiful scenic sky, man. The landscape. The little bird soaring over there. The light coming off the watchtower. The colors. Man. Dude, this is so nice. He's got his initial down here. 2020, it says. He did this one in 2020. This painting is four years old, guys. Four years old. Man, that is a beautiful card. Wow. So rare. Dude, it's so hard to get Atlas cards in these sample packs. I'm telling you. And when you look at that, look, look how nicely manicured that thumbnail is. Look at that. It's like uh it's like someone like brought like one of those rotary blades to it, and they just like trimmed that up. So nice. <laughs> oh my god. The watchtower. Wow, what a freaking what a pack this was. Unbelievable. Unbelievable pack. What a great artist, man. Jeff's been doing it so long. So good. Look at this pack. Look at this. The watchtower. Exceptional. The flash fires. It's our other exceptional. We got the Apprentice Wizard, the Autumn Unicorn, the Sea Serpent, the Gnome Hollows, exceptional from Matthias. So many exceptional sights. Unbelievable. The Bone Rabble. So we got a couple great ones from Jeff. Tony Sudlow, Mage Hunter. Beast of Burden from Lindsay. Jussie Pilkis. Lucky Charm. The great Jeff Easley, Heat Ray. Swan Maidens. We got a couple from Aussie. We got a basic sight land. The Autumn River. The enormous Grim Reaper. Unique. We all will meet eventually. We all will meet eventually. What a line, man. Did they keep that line? Why would you ever change that? Tell me they kept that line. Come on. I bet they, I bet they didn't keep it. Ah, unique spirit awaits us all. It's true. <laughs> we will, we all will meet eventually. That is money right there. That is a type line text right there. Men of Lang. What a freaking pack this was. Look at this pack. Look at the amazing sorcery sample cards, guys. I, that, the Men of Lang tried jumping away from me. Look at it. So good. Unreal, this pack.
Wow. I can't believe we hit exceptional sights and we hit the Grim Reaper. Dude, that's so good. Jeff, Jeff, uh, did he just like my, let me see. I saw Jeff like, um, he might be watching on Facebook. He often watches on Facebook. He reacted to my live video. I think he just, I think he just gave me a thumbs up. All right, yeah, so he might he might be watching it on the Collector Art House Facebook. So maybe, hopefully he saw his watchtower get pulled. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Did you guys, you guys like these sample pack breaks? If, do you want to do more of these? I mean, I got, um, let me, hang on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> We're all going to make it, bro. We're all going to make it. I got a few left. <laughs> got a few of those. I got a few left. So we could do more, but they're getting hard. I gotta, I gotta like, I gotta let it ride for a while because they're getting harder to find, and they're getting expensive as hell to acquire. What else? What else? <clears throat> Paintings, guys. The number one collectible. Paintings and sample cards are the rarest things. The Macedonian warriors. Look at these guys. Thrust into battle. They can only move forward. That's all they do. Charge forward. What else? I don't know. <clears throat> Incredible. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Hello. <laughs> Drew Tucker. The Pathfinder. Gotta love it, baby. Unbelievable. What else? Macal? You guys want to see a Macal Nagy Paul proof? I don't know. You said you said wait. He was you, you didn't like the outcome of the last couple auctions. They ended a little low. I think people got tired. Hey, how about uh, how about encasements? Ah, backs wrecked. So wrecked. How about those cases, guys? Look at that. Isn't that nice? No better protection. So nice. That's the real deal right there. Alpha pack. All right. All right. All right. Got a stretch. Look at that. Look at these Macedonian warriors. Couple last things here. The God All right. Just for scale, for scale purposes, it's about chest level, more or less, just to give you an idea. People always ask about the cases. You got cases? Is this in a case? Nah. Somewhere I got cases, right? Where's the cases? Wreck back. Oh, there we go. All right, guys. You want cases? We got cases. Let me put the painting away before somebody gets hurt. Let's take a look at these cases because they're coming soon. Month or two. Month or two. They're getting packaged up. They're about to get shipped out. And they're on their way soon. So you got the starter decks. The pre-con kit decks, right? Look at this. No magnets, no problem. All natural, right? Look at these beautiful elemental avatars. That's it. Natural. Perfectly natural. <laughs> and then you got the Alpha Booster box. Fits like a glove, no magnets needed, no goofy screws, clear, as day fits like a glove trying to steal my dust i didn't scratch it off but it's alpha right because you got the eric's curiosa these cases are money i can't wait to get more of these man these alpha boxes are heavy man 39 packs that's no joke looks beautiful though fits like a glove look at that fit precision measurement where's the sliding door look at that slides right in and out no big deal doesn't come loose, doesn't come loose, no problems, just slides right off, slides right in. 
Boom. That's it. You know, and then it sits on the shelf. Someone asked me, like, does this door slide in and out? You can get it in and out. It's got a notch groove, so it just slides right in. But then it just sits on the shelf. How's it going to slide out? You know? You're not going to juggle it like grenades. You know? <laughs> it just sits on the shelf. It's a display piece. It's freaking awesome. So you got that. I don't know if they make, I don't know if they produce these in, in mass. I gave two of them to Drew Tucker when I saw him at IX. Um, yeah, I think there's, there's going to be separate SKUs for alpha and beta. I'm, I'm pretty sure. So these are alpha products, but you got the, um, these are amazing too. Look at these. These are awesome. Just for display, right? You got to display the avatars. Sliding door slides right in there. Doot, doot, doot. No big deal. Snaps right in. Beautiful. Severin. Severin, legend. They're not available yet, guys. They will be. I'm going to have an affiliate code. Probably. This plays beautifully. So they're not available yet, but uh, they will be. <laughs> And um, I'm going to have a special uh, discount code. And then I'll probably have like a deeper discount code. It's what I'm trying to work out for Patreon supporters. Collector Art House Patreon. So, you know, it's a, it's a product that I really like and uh, stand behind. So um, it's great to uh, work out a deal with these guys. All right. All right, guys. Well, thank you to everybody who hung in there for two hours. It was an incredible sample pack break. We had a lot of fun. We hit the freaking Grim Reaper. Unbelievable. Look at these sample cards. Incredible. Sorcery cards are the GOAT. The absolute GOAT. You know? Only a nine. Doesn't matter. Look at it. Look at it shine. Severn. So good. Thanks to Elvira for coming on. It was very interesting. You know, the audio was a little spotty, but uh, I heard her fine. You go back and watch it, listen to it again. The fam art history lesson was great. Very well prepared, very well done, Elvira. It's a beautiful artist proof. It should be here tomorrow. I'm going to showcase her original painting for the alternate art dream quest. Um, there'll be a few other artist proofs from Elvira Shakarova. And we got the Pathfinder. We'll probably pop this one off tonight. Drew Tucker, guys. These are all sold out. Avatar. The Pathfinder Avatar by Drew, man. The one and only. Great guy. Four embellished prints left. Hit me up. Join the Collector Art House Discord. If you want to get in on sample pack breaks, I'll probably uh, pick a price where I don't get absolutely gashed <laughs> when I pull the Grim Reaper worth like the value of the whole pack, probably. Uniques, man. This is like extinction level rarity. Unbelievable. And it's such a banger card. Its early effect was so freaking OP. You roll the dice, boom, dead. Discard, summon it back, roll the dice, boom, dead. Discard, summon it back. You get the idea. Thanks, Mike, later all. All right, guys. Subscribe, ring that bell. Thank you, guys. Take care. Have a good day. Talk to you.